and the stuff on your mind is feeling unclear, just hop on the mic and speak without fear. Let's air out. Hello, everybody. What's going on, ladies and folks? I am pulling up the outline for the podcast, and welcome back to episode 21. Uh, The name of this podcast was Take Your Roommate to Work Day. Uh, A bit of a story for that one. So last night, Ethan and I attempted to record the first ever two-man podcast. He was going to act as my uh, my co-host, my Jamie. Uh, and we had it all set up in his room, two mics going, the camera on me, and uh, we recorded for about 40 minutes uh, the first time, and then the software we were using crashed and completely locked us out. We lost all the audio for that 40 minutes besides the audio from the webcam. Uh, so we uh, gave a reset, uh, started retelling some of the stories once again that I'm going to have to tell for a third time here, uh, if the third time's any hint. The second time, it did not work again. We got like 25, I think it was 23 minutes in, uh, we'd gotten through two stories and I was like, hey, maybe should we like, uh, you know, pause it and save what we've got so far? Uh, Ethan was confident though that we are good to push through to 30 minutes and get that, uh, that last seven minutes done, uh, finish one more story or so. Uh, and then like two minutes later, it just completely crashed and froze and we lost all of that again. Uh, all the audio from the temporary files was all corrupted. Uh, so it's gone. There is, uh, like I said, there's some salvageable audio from the webcam so i think uh in maybe in the coming weeks i'll, I'll raise that as a lost episode uh of the attempted first uh, dual podcast but ethan ran some tests last night and he uh he figured out the cause was the webcam uh was just with the the setup he had going on with all the audio uh all the audio settings he had to push into his audio recording program for the two mics because they weren't the same input style uh, the camera audio also recording just just threw a whole wrench in the plan and just gummed up all the gears and uh, it just is not possible. So I think uh, in the future, episode twenty two, there will be two of us, two two two. It seems fitting. Uh, we're also probably going to record it at the end of our thirty days of yoga journey. Uh, so it'll be a nice time to reflect on that and how we both uh, felt changes through both of those. I am recording. Just had to give myself a quick check. Uh, but yeah, so this podcast is a. Uh, it's my third go at it, deja vu. Um, so hopefully uh, you'll get to hear hear that lost episode. We'll salvage the audio. I'm already getting over myself. This is why I needed Ethan here. We uh, we had some good banter going. It was flowing well. Everything went great except for the recording process, uh, which, I mean, it was great for us. We had a great time. It, it was a lot of fun. It just meant that you guys couldn't enjoy the podcast. It was really just uh, us recording a conversation uh, where Ethan would look at me and I was staring straight at myself in the camera. So... Next week, I, uh, I'm very confident that uh, we'll have a, a two-man podcast, so hopefully that should be exciting for you guys. It, felt, it helped me a lot having a co-host to kind of uh, a listener being able to like chime in and get more details out of my stories uh, because I don't really know how much detail to add or I always feel like I'm adding too much detail. Uh, so it's nice having someone there to ask some questions and you know, get, the, get more elaboration out of me. So that was super handy, and he could look up things that uh, now I don't have to edit them in afterwards. So that's great. Less work for me. Uh, you, if you're also watching the video podcast, which a lot of you don't, I have ditched the green screen uh, for the podcast. I uh, First off, it's very hard to edit it on my computer. Uh, I can't actually, my computer just like chugs along trying to render both uh, the my video portion, then syncing up the audio, and then having a green screen background going on at the same time. It's just, there's always a delay in the audio. There's always a delay in the motion. So it's very hard to plan things out and then to like watch the entire podcast and have things queuing up with that delay, it'd take me like five or six hours just to edit uh, the one an hour and 10 minute podcast. So I think just having this background on my art wall, I like this podcast is supposed to be a personable thing. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be just me. So I think it makes sense for just me being in my room. Uh, you get some teasers. I'm not going to hide the paintings anymore for the pro and paints. Uh, you get to see the progress of the art wall as it's coming along. Like I think that's a, that's a really cool thing I'm doing for myself. It's a really fun process. Just seeing my room slowly more and more fill up with art. I have, you can't see it in the camera. Maybe I can, I can tilt the camera up there maybe. Up there, you see I have painted my logo. You can see the accountability board there too, actually. Uh, three perfect days so far this week. We are, we're coming in strong. 
Uh, yeah, so I think it makes sense just for me to record my, my room in the background. I think if I record in Ethan's room, I will do the green screen, but still just like superimpose this back in. Uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain here, my dirty laundry in the closet. Uh, yeah, so no green screen, which is going to make this video process a lot easier. Um, so it is just going to be pretty much straight video if you're, if you're into that thing. But most of you like the audio, and that's going to stay the exact same. No, no changes. Yeah, so let's... Uh, I got a big outline here. We're changing up the format here, trying to do some, uh, like a 20 minute intro, uh, 30 minutes of our topic. Uh, this week's topic is gonna be getting in trouble. I have some stories from uh, work last week and then those are gonna all relate backwards to a bunch of things I could come up with uh, in my past job experiences, as well as uh, just like school experiences. And uh, it's actually kind of hard to come up with things I got in trouble for. Uh, I don't think I've gotten in major trouble uh, a lot in my life. And uh, I kind of, I'll touch on that. Which uh, I was gonna say I, I I will touch on that, but uh, I haven't done it yet. So it's a uh, it's all gonna happen in the same process. Uh, live for me, uh, it'll feel a little spill up for you guys. We're bringing back the uh, musical interludes. So I know uh, you guys have been clamoring for it for more uh, more breaks in the podcast. You guys are uh, relentless in my inbox asking for that. But uh, let's talk about the week so far. A little a little introduction to what I've been up to. So last week you knew I was training for my new job at Loblaws as an order assembler, you know, stacking packets, stacking pallets, uh, you know, making them to all, all ready to ship to the store, uh, try and keep that supply chain in uh, good health. Uh, and always going swimmingly. Uh, Monday to Friday, we were working in pairs, as I mentioned before, me and Hussein and our trainer Jay. Uh, we were having a great time. We were doing very well. Jay was very confident in us. We were both uh, going to take a little tea sip here. Cold tea. It's cold herbal tea. I'm getting. I'm drinking a an energizing tea as it was. I think it's like a chamomile and ginger, and some other things. I don't remember all of them, but uh, the tea game has been very strong. I love my teas. I'm all about. It. I'm gonna release a line of teas. I think maybe in the future. Some people do coffee lines. I'm gonna do a tea line. Uh, I gotta think of a name for it though. Uh, yeah. Back to the topic at hand. Uh, training went great. I uh, worked Monday to Friday, and then I worked Sunday. So Friday was uh, kind of the first day, which we'll get more in-depth into the, the getting in trouble portion, a little teaser. Uh, things did not all go to a planned. Uh, but Sunday was uh, by myself, no trainer around, uh, and it went great. Like it was, uh, I was on Saturday, I was looking for new jobs and applying to new jobs, and I, I found some jobs that were being posted for the city of Kitchener. Uh, applying for summer positions, it looks like. Uh, very similar to a job I had in the town of Innisfil. Uh, you know, trimming grass, you know, emptying garbage cans, all that kind of the, the city cleanup works, trimming trees, all that kind of stuff, which that was like my favorite job I've ever had working for Innisfil, doing that, you know, 7 to 3.30 outside all day, uh, very contrasting to this uh, Loblaw job, Loblaw's job uh, inside all day, I, it's just draining to me, uh, not getting any vitamin D during the day, you know, it's dark when I go to work, and I when I get home from work, since it's winter, I get like maybe an hour and a half of sunlight, uh, just when we're doing yoga and I make dinner. Uh, so I don't get pretty much to get to see the sun at all, really. Uh, and that's just like mentally draining, like physically draining. I just feel so lethargic after work. So I think uh, I'm really hoping the city kitchen job uh, reaches back out to me. Right now, it's a kind of a nice split of five days working on podcasts and YouTube stuff and then two days working at Loblaws. And then even in my afternoons after Loblaws, I'm still trying to focus on doing some little things and getting videos together for the, the following days. Uh, but the kitchen job would be full time. But I think I would just have more energy being outside all day, doing something I enjoy more. Uh, you know, a lot more relaxed job. But this Loblaws job is Loblaws job. That's that's a tongue twister. Loblaws job is a it's a fast paced environment. You uh, you don't get get a lot of breaks. Well, you do get breaks. Oddly though, uh, you get I get two twenty two minute breaks. Though they include my time to get to the break room and then get back to my machine as part of my break, which like. It's not a 22 minute break then. It's more like a 17 minute break because I can only leave two minutes before my break and then I have to be back at machine like right at the end of that 22 minutes and start working again. Uh, so it's a, you don't really get much time to unwind and, you know, I get back to the break room, which is like three, three floors up. It's a, it's a hike to get back there. And I just wolf down a sandwich and some carrots. Uh, and then on my second break, I like to try and read and get my reading in. Uh, and then, yeah, so very fa fast paced, a lot of people moving around. Sundays were nice though. There's not as many people working there. It's a lot, it's an off day for a lot of people. Uh, so it was a lot quieter and easier to get things done. So I, I enjoyed it Sunday. I think, uh, I think it's gonna be a good balance doing that two days a week, 
uh you know tomorrow it is thursday today uh as the we didn't get any podcast recorded last night on wednesday which i'm just i'm so smart for planning these podcasts on wednesdays now rather than doing it thursday because if that was thursday night we would have had probably had to like cancel the podcast i would not have had it up in time friday morning but i'm a, I'm a hero and i'm doing this for you guys on thursday yeah so uh fingers crossed on that kitchen job hopefully that pans out um what else we got steam clean steam clean and proton paints these are the intro i did last night for them is going to be actually very different than what uh i've had a kind of a change in thoughts about both those series uh this morning kind of analyzing my youtube channel and what i could always do to improve it uh so steam clean we started releasing the resident evil videos uh on monday this week uh we have put out we put out one monday and then one just came out this morning on thursday they are both about 25 minutes long uh just a, a playthrough uh we got the face cam up and then it's just me playing through the game so if you're interested in watching me play games uh, feel free to come check those out right now they're coming out monday and thursday but i think that is going to change uh my new thought process is right now as a very small youtube channel i have to think about the experience of people who don't know who i am uh so essentially i've been watching a lot of videos on like youtube channels and creators and there's like you can really break it down into two kind of separate pools of there's idea based YouTubers, uh, people like uh, Mr. Beast who make like grand ideas and, uh, you know, like sketch comedy channels where it's you don't you're not really too focused on um, who the people are. Anybody can come from anywhere and watch it and get something out of it. Whereas there's also relationship based relationship based YouTubers, which is more what I'm aiming to be. Uh, where you're watching the videos because of me and you want to see my like reactions and opinions on these things and like I and the product and the uh, no say the game I'm playing is kind of secondary it's maybe like a shared passion we have but you're watching it more so because of me and then you'd watch a wider variety of me doing the content because I am the thing uh, if that makes sense so I think uh, in that sense creating these 25 minute videos like i've got my thumbnails i think my thumbnails are much more improved uh we did get a random commenter uh renegade operative uh popped into the the first resident evil video which is like very exciting for me that was a goal of mine to have like a random person comment on my video and uh that just means the videos are getting out there they're getting into people's recommendeds which uh is cool but uh now thinking about that i don't think see people seeing a 25 minute video uh, that has 20 views is going to be incredibly enticing to click on like first of all 25 minutes that's a big chunk of time to commit you really have to set aside like part of your day to go watch that uh, and really be like committed to it whereas most people on youtube are just like flicking through like five minutes maybe a 10 minute video um so i think uh, looking at both the steam clean and proton paints i'm going to try next week to do shorter videos uh which i know might not sound uh, super enticing to all of you who have committed to uh the channel and enjoy watching the the full length videos but i have been looking at my retention time this morning and uh it we're at like 30 percent on each video so people uh like the steam clean videos people watch like eight minutes of it uh proton pains people are watching like six minutes of it uh so it's not uh it's not capturing people's attention the whole time which i totally understand uh there is a lot of dead air especially in those uh proton paints video i'm kind of i'm still juggling with it we did do that new uh commentary style of me popping in and out and I think if I keep that style, but then also shorten the videos to, I mean, you'll see the picture right behind me if you're watching the video. Uh, I made a God of War painting for next week's episode, which was another idea I had to try and branch out to uh, like appeal to fan bases, but still keep my artistic style and try and keep like with, uh, you know, funny, funny-ish kind of paintings and like, you know, doing things how I want to do them, not just like copying, trying to go, you know, one for one recreations of uh, like artistic renderings and stuff like that. Uh, so I think next week I'm going to try and do more of like uh, more cuts in between the Proton Paints videos. So like as I like I add some color, it's going to jump then to the next color. Like I don't, I don't think you have to watch the whole time of me painting. For example, the uh, the glasses guy I am pointing to above my head that you saw in last week's episode. I don't think you have to watch the entire time of me painting his skin color vanilla or the entire time of me painting his glasses. I think if you just understand like, okay, I'm painting this, this color. Now let's get to the next color and then jump and it's completed. I think that is fine and that'll help the pacing in the video and keep people more engaged, I hope. Uh, and then again, so for next week, we'll have like God of War. So hopefully people who are interested in God of War might come in and see the painting and then they're like, oh, I kind of like this guy's commentary style. I like what he's doing. And then they'll check out my other stuff. So that's my hope. Uh, and for the Steam Clean videos, I'm thinking 
rather than doing 25 minute videos, uh, shortening those down to maybe like three 10 minute videos a week, doing like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday kind of style, maybe move protein paints to Thursday then just to kind of spread things out. But I'm not, uh, I'm not sold on that. Like I'm not completely committed to it. Um, just something to get uh, shorter, more manageable videos out there, I think will help entice things to a larger audience. And for you people who are like, I, Aaron, I really liked the long form videos. They were like relaxing and I enjoyed, I enjoyed watching the full painting process. I have, uh, actually made a second YouTube channel, which very bold for only having 19 subscribers and, you know, going for a second YouTube channel, but it's going to be a very, a, a low, uh, a low key channel where it's just called more Aaron the Brock. And I'm just going to upload like the full, uh, let's play of Resident Evil. If you want to see that, just camera and me like minimal editing uh, and the proton paints i just do like a full sped up version of the video like 20 minutes long of the painting with some background music on it uh just if there's something you know you want to throw it on the background for something kind of like a podcast style thing if you just want to throw it on while you're doing something else and just have it on a second monitor or something uh so you can still get that uh, full experience and i'm not uh, taking that away if that's what you guys enjoyed so hopefully you'll see those changes uh, come into uh, effect next week. It's going to take more editing from me, but uh, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed editing. I think uh, that's one of the most more fun processes, more, more fun processes as I, uh, I learn new techniques and better things. I'm still working on, I got to get these creases out of the green screen. So it's a, uh, it would make my job easier to key it out. Uh, so I, I've got some ideas of how to do that. This next Resident Evil video, the green screen was in pretty rough shape. So that's a, uh, that's going to take some work this weekend to try and figure that out. Um, and then on the weekends, I put out the weekly update. Actually, I don't think I've talked about that. The weekly update came out on Saturday. That is just going out on Instagram and Facebook. If you're not following them, uh, Instagram.com slash Aaron the Brock and Facebook.com slash Aaron Uh, and those are just going to be, I usually forget to post on my social media when I upload a video. Uh, and now it's like, I'm just posting the thumbnails. There's not really much, uh, going on into those videos not a lot of effort so i want to think of a better way to, uh, that i could utilize my social media and i think uh, doing these weekly update things will help and then maybe throughout the week posting like uh behind the scenes photos or like maybe when i'm recording the painting i take some photos along the way to kind of tease out what we're painting next time um maybe clips from the podcast uh you know maybe like a, a clip from the steam clean and stuff like that rather than just uh, posting the thumbnails that you could see on youtube or anywhere else so trying to branch out that way and do more things on social media. Uh, the weekly update, again, I had a lot of fun filming that, making some very 90s-ish like uh, student film kind of videos. Um, that intro was a lot of fun to film, and uh, I guess I, I could easily like add it and switch out those, uh, those little film clip things uh, in the future. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on on my social media. If you're not following that, you can uh, check that out. Go check out the weekly updates. Those are going to come out on Saturdays. I am, I'm really filling up my, my schedule, which I like it. I like uh, filling up my time. I said last week I don't like wasting time or killing time. You know, I want to make uh, all my time meaningful, and, uh, you know, I want to have something to show for it. So it's very cool making these videos and putting a lot more effort into the editing, and even just, like, the process of the whole thing has been a lot more fun. So uh, I'm enjoying it. The more I do this YouTube thing, I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it more. Uh, and I think that's a really good sign because I'm – not like I'm not getting paid or anything for this. It's purely out of like my own enjoyment and just my own satisfaction. And I think that's a great sign for my job. Like every other job I've had, uh, I would not have done it if they weren't paying me. Like there's no position I've had before that I'm like, this is so fun. I would do this without without getting paid. Um, and like this is the the first thing. Like okay, there's no guarantee of money in the future, but I still enjoy doing it regardless. Uh, so I think that's a really good sign, and I think it's a good sign that I'm gonna be able to keep this up in the future. And I think that uh, I like positivity I have towards it is gonna translate, and the enthusiasm towards it is gonna translate better into uh, my content. So uh, yeah, exciting times for the channel. We uh, I planned this out, this intro out for 20 minutes, and I am pretty much nailing it at 19 minutes. So uh, I think without further ado, we are gonna bring back the. What are they called? Musical interludes. I gotta start thinking of some new ones too. Get a uh, get Ethan to fire off some new ones. Um, very cold tea. It's not even iced tea. It's like a uh, room temperature tea, which is weird because room temperature is like pretty warm. But I guess in regards to the the liquid, it feels cold. Uh, yeah, we got some more some more music going for the podcast. Some outro music from my YouTube videos would be cool. I think uh, that's probably the next step. Shorter videos. Uh, outro videos. I really like, I like my little intros I've made. I, uh, those are fun to make. 
I think Steam Clean might need some updating, but I know that's a, that's coming in the future. I think Proton Paints is a, I really like that intro. That came out really well. Ethan complimented my camera work on that, and uh, I would agree. Uh, it is a it's a very cool intro. So I think that's gonna stick around for a while, even though the name is kind of weird. Proton Paints, even Steam Clean is a uh, it's weird for just let's play videos, but uh, it's a way for me to organize my videos and my thoughts and like, you know, we can always change in the future. I don't think it's hurting anything. So, yeah, without uh, rambling anymore, here comes a musical interlude, and we'll see ya at the uh, the meat and potatoes of the podcast. Getting in trouble. Do 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 musical interlude. All right. Well, for me, that was about a, a eight second break. For you guys. It was probably like a, a six second interlude, and we're right back here. So the uh, the theme for this week's episode was getting in trouble, and this all stems from an event that happened last Friday uh, at Loblaws. So as I mentioned in the intro, Friday was kind of our uh, our spreading our wings day. We are still in our orange vest, signifying that we're training, but uh, for the first four days, we're working together. One guy was picking the items from the shelves, the other guy was driving the, the pallet jack, uh, and then we just alternate. And on Friday, we were doing it solo. We were getting our own orders. We were, like, fully on our own. And then our trainer, Jay, was just going back and forth in between the warehouse, you know, checking on each of us, giving us tips. And uh, he's very nervous on Fridays. He said he's a, he's a father. So he's, like, he's always so worried that something's going to go wrong or someone's going to hit something or hit someone or they're going to get hit. So he's just, like, on edge all day. And, uh, you know, starting off the morning, we were both – Jay was mentioning that we are both kind of off our game. We were – I think the nerves were getting to us. We were – I'm just noticing now how like uneven my paintings are on the wall. Like I'm seeing the space between the spaceman ceiling and the uh, the glasses man. I'm just I'm slowly slanting up. It looks like, unless the camera is actually, maybe the camera is angled slightly. Oh, I think the camera the camera was angled slightly, but I think still the same thing. There is a extra headspace on that spaceman thing. I got to rearrange those paintings by the way too. Off way off topic here, but uh, I want to put them in. Uh, in order because right now they're looking like from kermit to kratos as i like to say you can see that the progression from october 23rd to january 24th that's uh that's how far i've come uh but back to it jay yeah very nervous about us both being on our own and uh you know he's a a worried father we were off our game in the morning i was kind of making some dumb pallet stacking mistakes and uh, he had to come save me a few times and like uh sorry sorry my nose is just nose is dry he had to save my pallets from uh, some dumb mistakes I was making that would have cost me in the in the future, making some instability as I went up higher. Uh, so he, uh, yeah, he fixed that stuff, and I was just wrapping up an order, and Jay is like, okay, Aaron, you're pretty much good to go. You can go wrap this skid, go grab your label from the printer, and then go uh, drop off your pallet, and uh, I'll go check on Hussein. So I was like, aces, money, you know, we're I feel like I'm getting the rhythm going. So I drive off to the printer. I, uh, I tell the printer to print my label, grab my label, and then I'm slowly on the slowly on the gas because I'm very aware always of like everyone around me, making sure I don't hit the skids or hit any racking. Very concerned about hitting stuff. So I pull forward maybe like six inches to a foot, and the printer just comes crashing to the ground. It just on my right hand side, it just hits the ground, bursts open. Uh, the cable that was plugged into it flies out, and I look at it, and it's like it's all damaged and bent. I uh, I wish I took a picture of the scene as a you know as a you know to kind of maybe cover my butt and be like okay this is where I was driving this is what happened uh, it's not like I drove straight into the the printer the printer by the way is at the end of an aisle so like on the end caps of like think of a grocery store just a, of way higher shelving like a Costco end cap the printer is like on the end of that on a little shelf. Um, yeah, so it came crashing the ground. I stopped immediately. I had to find someone else and be like, hey, uh, I need to get in contact with Jay. Uh, I broke the printer. I knocked it off the, the shelf. Uh, he's like, okay, uh, I'll go find Jay. You stay here. Go park your, your pallet jack around the corner here. Uh, so I go park my pallet jack, and then Jay comes around the corner, and I kind of flag him down. I'm like, Jay, tough news. I didn't hurt anybody. Uh, didn't hit any racking. However, the printer is effed up. I just, I smoked it. I didn't even smoke it. No, I nudged it off like a like a cat pushing a glass of water off a table. You know that? Just the slowly... Psh, I think that's all I did. Uh, I think what happened was like the top... Uh, so on my pallet, I had a... Jay had stacked a second pallet on top of it for like uh, extra stability. And that pallet was kind of hanging over slightly on the edge. And the printer was also sticking off slightly over the edge. So in my concern of checking 
to not hit the racking or to not hit anybody else. I didn't really check, like I didn't look up. I was looking down and behind me. I didn't look up to see what was going on uh, with the, the height of my pallet. And that just like caught the edge of the, the printer and just slowly glided, glided it off gently down to the ground where it smashed open. Uh, and he was he was frustrated. He was he was upset. He wasn't mad. He was he was you know was happy that no one got hurt and that I didn't get hurt. You know I didn't hit any racking. That was like a nightmare to deal with. Uh, but he's like, oh man, I've never had any incidents happen to me before. We have to go into the supervisor's office, fill out some incident reports. So I had to go in and write out what happened. You know what happened to from my perspective. Jay had to write out like why he wasn't there. What happened from his perspective? Uh, and the supervisor had to write out like. Uh, a combination of the two and what they thought was the main cause of the the event which uh they just wrote down like inexperienced driving uh luckily i still had my orange vest on so it was like kind of uh okay uh and it was just a printer that got hit jay was kind of between his like disappointment uh he was also like impressed that like how did you not hit the garbage cans below the printer how did you not hit the shelf the printer was on how did you not hit the foam beside the printer how you only hit the printer miraculously and uh the it guys were looking at the printer uh, and initially they're like, hey, uh, if there's if this printer can't be reused and it's done, like we can't, uh, we have to incur a charge on you. Like you'd have to pay for it because you broke company property. And I've been like, shoot. Um, I'm at this point. I'm like, I'm already thinking about new jobs. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quit so they can't uh, take it out of my paycheck and just like get out of here and go find a new job. I could find a job pretty quick. Um, but there was no cost. The only thing they had to replace was a power cable, which they already had one on hand. Uh, and the printer has like a big old dent in it, so it's a it's a sign that I've been there. Um, yeah, and that was a that was a, an exciting Friday. Uh, exciting for me. Jay was less less enthused. Uh, he was like somewhat joking about it. He's also like, Aaron, you're taking this very well. Like a lot of guys would be, you know, going crazy. They'd be panicking. They'd be like in therapy that they broke company property. Like you're very calm about this. Like I just went back to work afterwards. Like nothing happened. Just started like picked up another order and just went off on my way. Uh, and I didn't want to tell him like it's because I didn't really care if I lose this job. I'm like I could I could get a new job. I'm fairly confident. Uh, this is not like a, it's not like a super incredible job. Two days a week, twenty bucks an hour. Like I could find a better paying job with some more hours. I think pretty pretty quickly. Uh, so I wasn't too concerned about it. But I just kind of kept my mouth shut. Like yeah, I got a I got a strong mind. Like I'm, I put it behind me, which is true. Which is true. I didn't like that is part of it. I didn't. I'm like okay, it's happened. It's done. No one got hurt. Like what else? What else am I gonna do about it? There's nothing else I can effect whatever they decide is my punishment which ended up being a, like a slap on the wrist i had some little coaching session with a supervisor that just said uh be careful that's pretty much it uh and a lot of the other full-time workers there were like super super chill about they like, they didn't care at all they're like yeah that printer's in a pretty stupid spot it should really be moved uh it's not your fault uh like you didn't hit anything else like we're all cool like you're fine no none of us care uh, the super, the like uh, health and safety guy, he came over. I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's honestly pretty funny that you're a tarnished Jay's reputation. Uh, so he was like joking around with me. You know, he's like the the burnt hand never. I don't remember the phrase. The burnt hand never burns again or something like that. But it's true. Like I'll never hit another printer. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Because if I do, then they're gonna be like, this is. A, he's got a thing out for the printers, man. He's a. Uh, we gotta shut this guy down. I'm slowing down the supply chain issues. Uh, one printer at a time. Just gonna take out, take them all out, and there's no no pallets are going out. But uh, that story reminded me of another story that happened when I was working for Innisfil. Uh, very similar, uh, slow moving, slow moving accident. So I was in the in the salt dome with two other guys, and they were just uh, shoveling out some material. And they asked me to kind of uh, you know spin the truck around. We were driving these one ton trucks, which maybe you've seen them for townships. They got like these big steel boxes on the back that like they come out like a foot on each side from like the regular truck body. So they're pretty wide and they. Uh, it was very hard to see what's behind you uh and like there's a backup cam on all the trucks so i am kind of doing a three-point turn in the salt dome there's not a ton of space because there's a big pile of salt and topsoil all around there's like a bunch of shovels and equipment in there so it's a, a tight space to spin around in um so i uh, i'm backing up very slowly to make sure i have room to like turn and get out the the door and i'm watching in my my backup cam like the two guys that are shoveling so like i don't want to hit them obviously uh, so I'm going very slowly, backing up, making sure I have enough room. And then when I do, I just pull forward, go out, and I'm gone. I go park, uh, and I'm, like, I'm Gucci. That was uh, we're all good. And then as I'm uh, walking away from the truck I just parked, uh, the guys come up in a, another truck. At least one of the guys came up in another truck and goes, uh, "Did you did you feel that?" And I go, "Feel what?" No. And he goes, "Oh, you just backed into the garage door." I'm like, "Oh no." 
Like I was going, I was being so careful and cautious. That I didn't hit them. I didn't even account for like my blind spot of the, the garage door on my right hand side. And uh, so he drove me back to the, where the other guy was standing, looking at the garage door. And there's just a big vertical crease down the aluminum garage door. Like it was, it was a losing battle for the garage door. There's no way it was going to beat that, uh, that steel box. And they're like, yeah, we pretty much figured you wouldn't even notice that you hit it. Like uh, it was very, it took no pressure at all to crack it. So they had to call a supervisor over, man, very similar procedure. He came over and he's like, uh, you know, what happened? Who was driving? And once he found that I was driving, he went, uh, he went a little easier. He was also also like kind of like upset, like, guys, you shouldn't let him drive the big truck in this uh, in this tight space. You guys should have been driving uh, because stuff like this happens. So then I had to go fill out an incident report, you know, I had experience uh, at Innisfil. So that's why I was doing so well at the incident reports at Loblaws. Um, so, yeah, I had to fill out an incident report. Uh, didn't get, And then again, didn't get reprima- reprimanded at all. Didn't really get in any trouble at all. Even though this is like getting in trouble, this is like the extent to the trouble I've gotten in uh, at different jobs. Uh, it's just like, hey, uh, yeah, don't do that again. Uh, and now it was fun for like the rest of the summer. There's just a big crease in the garage door. That's like, that's my that's my my marking I left on the town of Innisville. So there's a damaged printer and a creased garage door that I've left in my wake uh, over the past. I mean, that's probably 2018. It's so like four years apart. Election years. I'm just uh, I'm just damaging stuff. Ah, little tea job. Um, the next one I've written now is bad patch job, but I've told this story like three times to Ethan. Honestly, I don't even think it's a great, a great story to pass along to you guys again. Essentially, we just fill in potholes. There's a really big one on a big, busy road. Me and the girl I was working with kind of filled it in. Normally, you'd back over the patch job with the truck to like kind of flatten it down and push it in so it doesn't get cooked out. She didn't feel comfortable backing up over the, the patch job, so we just whacked it down with shovels and then kind of went on our way. Uh, she had some issues backing she had to like turn around the truck and trailer on a very busy road on like a blind hill. So we were like parallel, we were like perpendicular on a very busy road. And she was trying to back a trailer into a little parking space uh, to get enough room to turn around. She was just jackknifing it constantly. Uh, she was panicking. I was like, we're probably gonna get hit by a big, busy concrete truck coming over a hill, uh, you know, get smoked for, for like 10 minutes. Probably wasn't even 10 minutes, probably like five minutes, but it felt like 10 minutes. Uh, she was trying to get the truck and trailer out. And then we finally got out and got back to the shop and then got called into the supervisor's office. And he's like, Hey, I just drove by your patch job on the sixth line. And it's like this patch everywhere. It's immediately no longer in the hole. And one second here. Ugh, love that sound. Love that sound. You got to go back and redo that hole. Uh, and this is already like after our shift is done, like three thirty, So we had to go back to like four o'clock, reef patch the hole, uh, pack it down a lot uh she drove forward over the uh, patch job this time she was smarter this time didn't have to reverse over it uh and then we went back and then she wanted to like claim overtime since we did technically work like an extra half hour and i was like there's not a chance and like i'm you can go for it i'm not claiming overtime for it to fix a mistake that we made like there's no way that's just gonna piss him off even more and then like he was fine like after we fixed it, he's like oh yeah we're all good happy friday see you later and that was it Again, very minimal trouble. So uh, let's talk about more trouble I got into. As soon as we're going back to school, a sick neck fighting and the loser list. So I think the loser list came first. This was in uh, in seventh grade. Uh, we uh, we did like uh, I don't know if you guys all did like teacher swaps. So like some teachers would teach uh, some courses and other teachers would teach other ones. So you kind of like uh, you have your homeroom and then you swap classrooms. So you're sitting at someone else's desk. Uh, for part of the day, essentially. Uh, and I was bored at one part of the day, so I wrote out this thing called the the loser list. I was in seventh grade at the time, so I would have been uh, 2007, I want to say. Uh, so I was 13 years old. Yeah, I was 13. Uh, and I wrote out, yeah, I wrote the loser list and I just wrote all my friends' names on it, uh, including my name. I was like, I thought it would be like a fun little joke. Like, oh, look at all these losers. And it's just all all my friends. Like, I didn't include anybody I wasn't friendly with because that'd be that'd be mean uh and then the mistake i made at the end of it was i i wrote by ryan like i wrote as if someone else wrote it and that was a that was the main mistake i made and then i stuck it i knew whose desk I was sitting in so i uh, i stuck it in his desk like hoping he'd discover it be like what we're all losers oh man come on ryan and then I'm like oh come on ryan you think we're losers and it'd be like all fun and stuff you know um so then i go to recess i don't really think about it and then as we're going in from recess, uh, our seventh grade teacher is like, Ryan, 
you come with me right now, right now. And he's like, Ryan's like, what, what, did I, what did I do? I don't know what I did. And then immediately I'm a good guy. I'm like, okay, I got to come too. It wasn't Ryan. It was me. She's like, what? Aaron, you come too then. You come too. And then we went in and like, she pulled out like, what's this loser list? Ryan. And she's, he's like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And like, I wrote it. I wrote it and I wrote by Ryan on it. And she goes, and what's this part about sucking dick? And I'm like, what? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't write anything like that. And she goes, oh, it says right here. Uh, and someone had added to it. Uh, uh, Aaron B, not me, a different Aaron B. There's two Aaron Bs in our class. Aaron B uh, sucks dick and will always suck dick. Something like that. Uh, right at the bottom of it, like added an amendment, a PS at the bottom of the letter. I guess after I had stuck it in his desk, uh, this person who I'm not going to call out, but I, I know who it was. I know who it was. Um, added that to it, which that I think that's what really sprung uh, the investigation. I think the loser list itself uh, was pretty mundane. That's like, a, you know, I called my friends losers. That's not you can't punish me that much for that. I, I included myself on the list too, like I was a loser. Uh, lying about who wrote it though, that was a uh, that's respectable. That uh, but I took ownership of it immediately. Uh, so that kind of sprouted up and became a bigger issue. Like later on in the year, we had this big like. Uh, Maybe like 10 of the boys in our uh, grade 7 class all got called into this meeting because there was like drama between uh, a bunch of different guys. And I never had drama with anybody. Like I was pretty chill with everyone all around. Like I never, I've never had like enemies really. Uh, I'm just like that kind of a, a laid back, cool, cool dude, you know? I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a chameleon. I just fit in. Um, so I get called down to the office and there's like already like eight guys sitting around a circle table. And, like, there's the guidance counselor there, uh, Miss Bailey. Uh, and then I have to join this group of uh, delinquents, as they say. And they were, it was all just my friends. Uh, and they were talking about all some of this drama and stuff. And she uh, turns to me and goes, Aaron, what can you tell me about this loser list? And I was like, oh, boy, here we go. Like, this was months after. So she, she I don't know if she had a copy of the loser list. Uh, she might have because I think the teacher must have uh, confiscated it. And she pulled out the loser list. And she goes, what's going on here? Why did you write this? Why'd you call your friends losers? And I was like, it was like a like a funny gag, you know, like uh, it was just uh, it's just I was writing my friends. It's just for fun. I like I put myself on the list. I called myself a loser, you know. I didn't think anything of it. She goes, yeah. Well, what about this uh, sucking dick? I don't even know if she said. I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even know if she's if that was her phrasing, but that it's funny to me that she said that to a thirteen. What about this sucking dick, Aaron? As a thirteen year old boy, um, and I was like, I didn't write that. I he wrote it, and I pointed to who it was, and I was like, I, yeah, he he wrote it. I didn't do that. Like it's it's different handwriting. You can clearly see it's very my handwriting sucks, so you can clearly see it's two different people wrote that. Uh, so yeah, I got heated for that. Um, then we had to have this like big like friendship power and like everyone had to we had, like all shake hands with everything. It was uh one of those things where I think it was it was just like boys being boys kind of thing. I know that's a it wasn't like we were doing any like really we weren't like beating the crap out of each other and like saying really shitty things about each other. It's just like casual like boy rivalries and like you know talking smack is like just part of the way you grow up and like it's what you do with your friends and stuff and then the teachers were like very concerned that's like uh, i mean the female teachers let's uh, let's be fair i think the male teachers didn't really care the female teachers were like you guys being too mean to each other like you gotta be more respectful um and i i mean i still disagree with your stance i think uh nothing we did was like over the top um i think uh, well, i think one of the things <laughs> that started was uh one of my friends got bit by another kid uh, accidentally. Like he was running by, and they like bumped into each other and like bit his forehead. <laughs> and then we had to like go. Uh, he bit me. He bit me. I'm trying. Not, it'd be great if I could say names, but I don't. Really, I don't I'm trying. I gotta try and say that less. Um, even though it make for a better story. I mean, I don't know who's listening to these things, so I just don't wanna don't wanna oust people. Uh, yeah. So that was a that was a big drama in uh in seventh grade. Then in eighth grade. Uh, there were, uh, boys started getting even a little rowdier. There were some bigger rivalries going on and we had some fights going on, which was, uh, honestly most exciting part of eighth grade was, uh, when you, I remember the first time, uh, two guys were like going at it and like, you know what, after school behind the portables, we're going to fight. And I was, everyone's like, Oh my God, it's going to be a fight. This is awesome. Like, we're, we're all fired up. Like, this is so cool. We've never seen a fight before. This is like, Oh my God, we were, we were all giddy for the end of the school day. Uh, so at the end of the day, we all behind the portables, which it might sound like a very like secluded spot, very hidden behind the portables. You know, we're out of the, the public eye. But uh, the portables were essentially you'd have the, the school, the big main school. Then there's like a, a paved area, 
like along the, right beside the school where like you know people play hopscotch and like do chalk drawings and stuff like that and then you have uh like four portables there's a very short row of portables and then i'm just open field behind that so the portables weren't hidden they're just hidden from the view of the school but straight behind it like it's just a wide open field like the school field the soccer fields bunch of houses back there it wasn't hidden uh very well at all um it was hidden for it was hidden on one side and that was it uh so like the two guys fought um and i remember where someone's like a teacher's coming a teacher's coming it was a very lame fight like a lot of just grabbing each other and like pushing and shoving each other around like some weak punches thrown no one got seriously hurt at all like we were 13 year olds we couldn't we couldn't hurt each other uh i think there was like a there's a big enough group of us that like if things did get like too heated we would have like pulled him off like don't do it man it's not worth it he's not worth it um and there was two there was two events of fighting the, yeah, the first one got shut down and i think after the first fight i don't i don't remember actually who was in the second fight i know who was in the first fight the second fight i want to say was one of the same guys uh and then a different uh it might have been someone else like sticking up for the first fighter guy uh, I don't even think you can declare a winner, honestly, for either fight. Um, and then, yeah, both of them got shut down within, like, minutes. Like, uh, one student, we know who it was, uh, like, immediately went to the principal's office. Like, There's, they're fighting right now. You got you to gotta get out here. They're fighting. And then teacher ran out, like, stop, stop. What are you doing? You should be friends with each other. Stop it. And they got pulled in the office. And everyone else, like, scattered. We were gone. But it was, like, super exciting. Everyone was talking about, like, the fight. You guys see the fight? That was so crazy. Like in high school, like there's tons of fights, and he was always it's always super exciting. There's always a big crowd around fighting. Like school is pretty boring, and so like a fight's going on. That's sick. That's unreal. It's it's sick when it's like a fair fight. When it's like people a guy getting ganged up on. That's not sick. I'm not about that. But like an even fight, two uh, mutual in, uh, parties of interest are going at it. I'm totally for it. Like uh, that should be a, that should be like a legal thing. If two like even men, if two men want to get into a bare knuckle fight. Like in the street, like sell a dispute. I think it should be totally fair. Just have like a cop there as like a referee to be like, if it gets too out of hand, he stops it. But I think that I think that should be like a consenting. I think other countries have that, like a consensual fist fight. I think that should be a thing. Um, so like the fights came out, and then we were doing a end of year trip, um, to Quebec. That's like a, the big trip our school did. Uh, but our teachers like, well, I've heard that there was fighting, uh, happening at the school. And uh, we need to know who was involved and who was spectating the fights. Uh, and then, so there was, he's like, I'm going to go through the attendance. And if you were at the fight, just say, yes, you were. We will find out if you weren't. Uh, and we will put this on your record. So I'm the first name that gets called. And like, I've got a good reputation at this school. Uh, so the teacher's like, Aaron Brock, were you at the fight? And I was like, yes, I was. And he was like, wow Aaron I uh, I did not expect that from you I uh, I was a good student like I, I got my work done I was a nice guy I was I was up for valedictorian and I turned it down because I like I don't want to do it uh wish I wish I did I, I think it would have crushed it uh like I mean doing now I'm a damn podcaster that would be cool I could add valedictorian <laughs> elementary school valedictorian that would have been a big deal that would have helped me out um but yeah I, I turned that down like uh, immediately um I remember who was the valedictorian, honestly. I think there was, uh, I think I do. I think there was a boy and a girl. Um, yeah, he was like disappointed. He was like, oh, and I, I didn't ex- not expect that from you. Uh, and then I saw him write it down, like on the back of my, uh, on the back of something. Like he made a list of all the names. And I was like, man, I could get like kicked off the Quebec trip for going to watching this fight, man. I was, and I was like worried. I was like panicked. Uh, and nothing came from it. Um, once again, uh, I thought I was in trouble. Nothing happened of it. Uh, so I went to Quebec. It was a good time. We had lots of great stories there. Um, and that is, do I have any other, uh, I have one more sick neck story, but this wasn't getting in trouble from, uh, the teachers is getting in trouble for my mom. I just bought a, a new winter coat. Um, I was excited, wore it to school on the first day. Um, and then at the end of the day, I'm like, uh, hold on, where's my coat? Like my coat's not on, it's not on the winter hook. You know, I have like all the hooks at the back. We were in the portables, uh, the same portables where there's a fight, but this was like fifth grade. This is, we're in reverse chronological order here. Um, so I like, at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't know where my coat is. Like, so I just like wore a sweater home because I could not find my coat on the hook. And I was like, man, this, mom, I, lo-, I went home and I was like, mom, I lost my new coat. Like, I have no idea what happened to it. Um, so I was like, I remember my friend, uh, oh, Aaron B, the other Aaron B, who uh, sucks dick all the time, apparently, uh, and will always suck dick, uh, which I do not agree with those statements. Um, he had, like, a very similar coat. I remember, like, 
the, when I first showed up, it's like, hey, yo, coat, coat bros, you got close, close looking coats. Um, so I remember, uh, there was like a, with the first like a uh, course faction, like to go talk to the other Aaron and be like, maybe he took your coat home because it looked very similar. And then like we looked at it and we looked at his coat and he's like, no, this is, a, this is a worn coat. This is not a brand new coat. So my mom, my mom was like, through all doing this, my parents worked till like five o'clock. So like I went to a babysitter after school and then like they found out after like school was closed. Uh, there was no option for it. Um, so this was like for like a week, uh, I was re- back to wearing my old coat and I was like, man, I don't know what happened to my coat. It's so crazy. You're like Aaron. Oh, I said the full name. Bad damn. I gotta, I gotta censor that now. 45 minutes. I gotta write that down. 45 minute, 45 minute censor. Um, I'm like, man, he's wearing the, I wish I had a coat like that. Just seeing him strut around the coat. And then like, uh, at the end of the week, my mom's like, my mom worked very close to the school. She like, so at like three fifteen, she like took off work and she came in just to like check at the end of the day. Like, let's look in the classroom, see where this coat is. Cause we had everyone looking around, like, where's this coat? Um, and like, there were some old coats hanging on the hangers. Then like, are they, any of these your coats? around? like, oh, those aren't my coats. My coat looks exactly like Aaron B's other errands there's also there's an aaron b and there's an aaron r and i was aaron br like it was uh my parents named me aaron because like it's a very uncommon name like you'll, you'll be a you're unique aaron's unique uh you'll stand out and then i've i had like seven errands in like my grade 11 english class it was wild everyone got named aaron in 94 apparently uh, so finally my mom came to the school and she's like she came to the classroom like okay let's look for your coat and like right off the bat she's like on the hook right there that's your coat and i'm like what that's my coat <laughs> and it's like that coat's been there the entire week i hung it up it was in the first place i took it off and hung it up on the wall it never moved and the entire time i was like that's not my coat no my coat is uh my coat looks at just like aaron b's uh and they are they're different coats they're if you put them side by side mine was like a deep red his was like an orange it's just the whole i was freshly diagnosed colorblind this is in fifth grade i got diagnosed in fourth grade so i was like in my head i was so new to the coat that aaron the other aaron's coat was like that was my coat that's what my coat looked like so every time i saw this coat on the hook i was like that's not my coat i have no idea whose coat that is and yeah it was just it was sitting on the coat right the entire time and my mom was so upset that she had to take off work to come find the coat that was exactly where i put it now she's ignoring it for a week so that was the the coat the coat dilemma uh same thing happened very similar thing happened with the uh, gym shoes in the uh, eighth grade i lost a pair of gym shoes uh and they were just sitting up up top on the the coat rack in the in the hallway uh again i thought like oh, those aren't my shoes i don't know whose shoes those are they've been there the whole time though and then my my dad came and was like are these your running shoes aaron up on the coat rack and i go oh yeah yeah those are my shoes those are my shoes so uh, yeah i'm very bad at identifying my personal belongings it seems uh actually i made my first friends in uh in kindergarten was because i lost my shoes i lost them there those like those big baskets of shoes you know uh and everyone like took off the shoes put them in the basket and then you switched your indoor shoes and uh like i remember like day one i'm like i lost my shoes like i couldn't find them like i was like crying uh and then my friend uh a boy named muhammad came along i don't know if it was muhammad or luke muhammad and luke were both my my best friends like growing up till fourth grade when they both moved away but those are those are my bros uh like my earliest friends i remember uh, one of them found my shoes. Like, are these your shoes? They were in this basket. Was <laughs> once again, I could not identify my own shoes, uh, and they, uh, that's how I made friends with them. And uh, I think, yeah, fighting Muhammad was is also on the list of getting in trouble. This was like first or second grade. Uh, I don't. I have such little memory of this, but all I remember is getting put on the wall because I was being too rough with Muhammad. Like I was pushing him around, not like, not like violently. Like I was in second grade. Like I can't really hurt someone. And he was never in pain, like crying or anything. He was just like, he was kind of just, just taking it and being like shoved around and being, you know, roughed up a little bit. And the teacher would like pull me and she's like, Aaron, she, first time she saw me, he's like, Aaron, okay, come on, go to the wall. You can't, you can't play like that. You're too rough. And I was like, oh man. So I went to the wall for five minutes. I think this was like recess with like 45 minutes. This was the long recess after lunch. Um, and then after my five minutes, I went back to Muhammad immediately started like rough housing again. The same teacher's like, Aaron, back to the wall, 15 minutes. So now I'm going back to the wall for 15 minutes. Now I'm lost. I've lost like almost half hour of my recess, you know, five minutes, 15 minutes, that's 20 minutes. 
Uh, then finally I go back out and then third attempt immediately once again too rough like seconds in I just got I don't know what I don't know what was going on don't know what we're doing I just remember repeatedly getting pulled off pulled to the wall because that's being too rough to Muhammad uh maybe maybe it's because she thought I was racist or something and she's like we gotta cut this behavior out right away um I remember one of my friends got in trouble for calling one of the Lebanese kids chocolate boy uh which I think that's pretty tame like a a second grader calling someone chocolate boy he probably did he did he did look like chocolate to us like i'm not i don't think that's racist that's like a kid's brain um which maybe they're trying to like save us from a lifetime of racism but who knows um a similar story to that i got in trouble for uh biting my sister uh multiple times that's on the schoolyard this was like she's a year older than me so it's there's a limited time we were both on the little kid's yard uh, and I bit her like twice, and then like they're freaking out. She's like, "Oh my god, this guy, this boy just bit a girl twice!" Like, "Oh my god, this he's he's psycho!" And I got sent to the office. And then like once they figured out that, oh oh, that's his sister. Okay, well it's it's fine then. Yeah, you can you can just go back and play. Yeah, we we don't we don't even care anymore. Just like don't, just don't. I guess. But uh, if it was a stranger's kid, I guess it would have been far worse. I'm just biting uh strange girls. Uh, talking about uh biting strange girls. Uh, at summer camp, had a summer camp at a sick knack. Uh, I remember being like super, I think that was so cool. Like this is, yeah, this summer camp is happening at, at my school. I kind of know these grounds. I kind of run this place for all these like kids that didn't go to a Uh, I remember at the end of one day, you know, it's kind of kids are like slowly going home. Maybe it's like four o'clock or something in the summer, five o'clock. Um, and there's like a few of us left and there's just like, I remember some people, some girls were, like running laps around our gymnasium. Uh, and I was kind of playing with this like big uh, rubber bouncy ball, kind of like a beach ball size. And uh, I remember I see this girl running along the wall, the long side of the gym is a rectangle, and I just boot my beach ball at her, like not thinking like, oh, it'll come, it'll like kind of bounce off her, it'll be funny, you know? I don't know, maybe I was flirting with her, I don't know. Um, and I remember in, in like slow motion, it it doesn't hit her. It like happens to cross like right in front of her path, so she runs into it when she's at full speed running, and then like flips over it and like lands very awkwardly on like her arm or something. It was just it was a brutal landing. I just I took her out like if if it was malicious, I was just like having fun like oh kick the ball hey kick the ball you can kick it back to me it'll be it'll be fun. Uh, and she just oh she ate it she ate it so hard just like ragdolls over the ball and just like crumples on the floor and starts crying. And uh, I'm like looking around and like no one <laughs> saw me kick the ball. So I'm just, I just shut my mouth. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what happened. I just like quietly stood there as all the like the, the counselors like look up. They were like chatting and doing other stuff. And they like ran over to see her. They're like, what happened? She was like, I tripped over the ball. I'm like, where'd the ball come from? I'm, like, I don't know. And I was like, man, I don't know where the ball came from. I don't know. Like, There's like seven other kids here and they didn't, I don't think they were too concerned about who did it. Like, what are they going to do? Charge us? Uh, but I remember they had to like start filling out some forms and like call an ambulance and stuff. Uh, cause they're worried about broken bones or something and then my mom showed up and we left and i was like i don't know it's like what happened to that girl I'm like i don't i don't know what happened let's just get out of here i don't, I don't know what's going on here uh, we should leave though we should definitely leave um what do i have kicked out of dollarama this was so this was not happening at school but uh this happened uh in the summer of grade seven it's probably just after the loser list incident uh we, we were getting to sleepovers I was uh, I was very scared of sleepovers early on. I remember at my second grade, yeah, my my grade two birthday, which would have been two thousand two. I would have been eight. I remember my friend invited me over to a sleepover, and I like looked to my mom like I I don't uh so and so invited me to a sleepover. I don't want to go. Say no. Say no. And then I was like, yeah, sorry. Uh, my mom said I can't go. Like sleepovers, I can't stay at someone else's house. I was like, I'm too young for that. And he's like, oh, that's too bad. Okay. And then by eighth grade, I was like, we were having sleepovers all the time. Sleepovers were awesome. You get to, my parents never really bought like junk food and stuff, but my friend's parents did. So I was like getting soda and chips and like pizzas and that. It was an awesome time. Playing video games late to, late to the night. Nerf gun fights. We had so many Nerf gun fights. Um, and like in the summer, we kind of like go roam around just a, a roving band of three kids up, up to no good. And I remember we were in a Dollarama one time and uh, we were playing with toilet plungers and we getting we gotten stuck to the floor. And we couldn't we couldn't unplunge the floor like they were really sectioned on there, and I remember and then the Dollarama cashier came and was like, "Hey, you kids, you get out of here, you hooligans, get out of here. You're causing no good. You're not buying anything. Get out of here." And we uh, we got out, and I remember being scared. That I got in trouble. That was a very minimal story, but that's just a 
ingrained in my mind. The the trouble moments are ingrained in my mind. The the few that have happened. Um, what I've written down here also. Uh, trouble adjacent. I have trouble adjacent where I didn't get in trouble, but uh, I think so, some friends will get a kick out of this. We were in uh, Chicago. Uh, just like kind of walking through the, we were in, uh, I guess Chicago in grade 12. So we, we were, we were adults. We we're not, we weren't adults. We were like 17 years old, however you were 16, 17 years old in grade 12, uh, on like a class music trip. Uh, so there's a bunch of students between, uh, ninth grade all the way up to 12th grade. It was like the entire music department. Um, and we were, my Ethan was there, my musical director, and my other friend Reed, who was a prominent listener of this, was also there. We, were, we had a blast. Uh, at some point, I want to have them both on the podcast, and uh, we can just talk Chicago and all the all the fun stories and things that happened. But um, one of these prominent moments was, uh, remember, we were just walking in, like, through a random part of Chicago, and there are these, like, planter boxes uh, in the center. Uh, I remember I, like, kind of ran and, like, ran on the edge of it and did, like, a little, like, spin move, you know, cool, like, skateboarder trick. Uh, Reed did the same thing. He ran up, kind of jumped off it. And, uh, it was cool. Was like, yeah, that was so cool. And then this other guy, Brandon, who was with us, he's, he saw us do it. He's like, oh, that's so cool. He runs up, does it, and as soon as he gets his feet up on the planter box, the teacher's like, Brandon, what are you doing? Get down from there. What are you doing? We're out in public. And he immediately got in trouble. And we are like, we both just did it seconds before. And he's the one that just, the teacher happened to be looking when he did it. And he got caught so fast. He's like, oh, man, come on. He, he didn't rat us out, though. He's not like, they did it too first or whatever. He just, like, he took it. And he's like, oh, man, that sucks. But we were dying laughing. It was so funny. The timing couldn't have been more perfect that we both got away with it. That's a, that's a big thing of myself, too. It's just uh, stuff happening around me. And I'm like, I got away scot-free which uh i do have written down here i don't get in trouble a lot people don't yell at me often and that is a uh, I guess maybe people just don't see me maybe i'm just too sneaky but when i get in trouble but also yeah i've never really even when people are mad at me i don't get yelled at a lot i don't know what it is whether it's just my my face i don't have a yell outable face people just feel bad for me or whatever i don't know i've never gotten like heated trouble like from a boss or anything it's always like very understanding like hey aaron you made a mistake we're gonna correct this mistake blah 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 blah, blah. I mean, it's just because I'm like, uh, they think I'm a smart guy, and like his yelling at him is not gonna do anything. He uh, he understands talking to him like a human. Uh yeah, that was trouble adjacent. Uh, my speeding ticket that kind of counts as a uh, get in trouble. I was in trouble with the law. The only time I've been in trouble with the law. Besides, like um, I had a phone that kept calling nine one one. Um, I remember one time we were at a music concert one time. Uh, like not a, a band performing. We were the band performing for like school. I remember my phone, I had my phone in my bag in my in the locker room, and I came back after like one of our performances, we were just in the locker room briefly to grab some like water and stuff, and I checked my phone, and it's like, you had two outgoing calls to 911, and then I had like two missed calls from 911, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, so I was like, I panicked and just took like the battery out of my phone, uh, and then at the end of the day, I put the battery back in, and my, I had like a bunch of missed calls from my mom, she's like, the police have been calling me, what's going on? And I was like, uh, my phone dialed 911 by accident, and I didn't know what to do, so I just unplugged it. <laughs> Uh, she's like, well, you got to call them back right now. We're still going to send cops to the house. Uh, so I had to call them back and explain what happened. And they're like, uh, we do, since it was such a delay between the calls, we do have to send an officer to the house tonight uh, to talk to you. So I was like, oh, crap, I'm going to get arrested for calling the police. Uh, and then the cop came by. I was like, uh, same thing, slap on the wrist. Like, don't do it again. Uh, not, and that was it. Uh, but the other time, dealing with the officers, getting a speeding ticket, I was working for RJ Burnside, working in Oakville. And uh, my morning had kind of wrapped up. So uh, I was talking with my friend Will. He had to get to Newmarket to go to a friend's house. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm in Oakville. I can come quickly grab you in Mississauga. It's like a 15-minute drive from where I am. Then we'll head to Newmarket, and then I can just head home. It's on my way. And then we were going to head to Waterloo. This was uh, this actually right before the the acid, the bad acid trip that I talked about. This is uh, the morning, the Friday morning of. Uh, so I'm like heading to his house. I turn onto some road, a country road on Oakville. And I see the cops had someone pulled over. And then I also see a cop like uh, at the edge of a drive-in movie theater, like the, uh, what do you call it? The way you, the, the entrance to it, where you pull in and pull out. I thought he was just getting ready to like pull out and leave. Uh, I didn't realize that he was getting ready to like pull someone over. So, and I just happened to be that uh, poor fish. So I'm driving, I'm doing 80. I'm like, I'm, I'm right on 80. I'm like right on the speed limit. I'm fine. Uh, and then I see the lights go on and there's part of me that's like, okay, maybe he just put his lights on to come meet this other cop that pulled over. Maybe this, this old lady they pulled over is like giving him trouble and he wants re reinforcements. 
and then i see that he's followed me for like a few seconds we've driven past this other lady that got pulled over so then i pull over uh, and the cop comes up to me and like this is the first time i've ever gotten pulled over i'm like a little nervous uh but i'm like okay i just immediately grab my license and registration i get it ready for him he comes up to the window and i hand it to him he's like okay thank you very much and then he comes back to the window and he's like man i am so sorry and I was like, actually, what? And he's like, I'm, I'm so sorry to do this. Like, I know you're doing, you're doing 20 over. It's a 60. And actually, no, I, the first thing I said, he goes, do you know why I pulled you on? I said, it's a 60, isn't it? And he goes, yeah, it is. Because like, he probably clocked me doing 80, like 80 on the dot. So I think it was very understandable that I thought it was an 80. Uh, yeah. And he came back. He's like, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I see, I see you're from out of town. And like, I know it's a, it's a tough spot. Like I have to, I have to pull you over. I have to give you a ticket. And I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. Give me the ticket. It's okay, sir. Hey, put my, I put my, I put his hand in mine. I say, it's okay it's okay officer give me the ticket he goes you know what i uh i knocked it down to 10 over for you because i, I see you're from out of town you just gotta just be careful around here there's a there are only 60s i know you're probably used to the the 80s up in the the country of barry uh and i go okay thank you very much and it was like a, it was like a 40 dollar ticket no uh no demerits or anything um it did jack my insurance up by like 150 bucks uh which was crazy actually no it jacked it by 500 bucks a year but it was like it was like uh, it was a big a big increase just that one minor ticket. What should now that I think about it, I gotta tell my insurance company I got my G. That's a I gotta do that. Uh, I should write that down actually. Rate rate live on the podcast. I'm getting in, into the habit of writing stuff down more often now. Uh, G insurance. G I'm a G insurance insured for being a gangster. Um yeah so that was my my only other run in with law. I'm slowly turning my myself on the chair. I should really look at the camera. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was funny to me that the cop was very apologetic that he he pulled me over and had to give me a ticket. He's he felt so he felt so bad for me. He's like, I'm so sorry, man. Ah, oh, I feel terrible. Like I ha- and I was like, I was just being super friendly. I was like, yeah, it's okay, man. Hey, hey, give me the ticket. It's okay. I un- I understand. I understand it's hard being who you are, but uh, next time next time don't pull me over. Next time, y- this is your one warning, officer. Don't let it happen again. Then I went on my way. Now haven't gotten a ticket since. No, I've gotten a couple parking tickets because of the stupid parking situation here, but that's not my fault. And then the, uh, the, uh, what's it called? Subdivision, what are the, 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 uh, the condo board, whatever it is. I don't even know if these are condos. I don't know. Whatever it is. You guys know the story. Oh boy. The last thing I'd written down was, uh, it's not even getting in trouble. It's the dumb thing I said to a manager at Zares once that, that came across my mind. His name was Randy. And uh, I remember he was like, uh, I was kind of like the the go-to helper guy, just like a laborer. I could I could do it all, really. I'm a, I'm a good worker. I'm a strong worker. I I pick things up quick. Uh, not just like picking them up like very rapidly, but like, uh, you know, techniques and stuff like that, and how to do different things, and like how to work the laser guns and the computers, all that stuff. Like I got it, no problem. Uh, so my manager Randy was just like looking at. They had this like brand new stocking system at the back. Like everything was organized differently. It was all set up differently and he was uh you know kind of like by himself he was like he's like very proud of this project it's like it's gonna make our system so much better and so much easier to find stuff it's a uh, it's gonna be revolutionary but it took a long time to get everything switched over from the old system of having no system pretty much to this very organized like uh like library shelves all this extra stock in the back room so he was like kind of you know pittering with it and i had nothing to do so i just came up behind him and was like hey randy you want a handy I'm like oh he he just turns and looks at me like strange eyes and i mean like oh god that was not that's not the phrasing i wanted to use yet you want randy you want a handy i thought it was like clever and like fun um you know a little play on his name uh then uh, yeah it's uh offering your boss a hand job is not not the thing you want to do but uh we uh, we got past it and uh well we moved on and then i just started calling him randy the manny after that because he's a manager randy the mandy uh and then i and then I don't work there anymore. So, wonder what he's doing. Wonder if he's getting handies from anyone else. But uh, that was it for the portion of getting in trouble. I think uh, I think that went very well. We went. It was supposed to be half an hour, and that went for forty, almost forty-five minutes. So, not bad at all. You guys like some stories? Uh, hope that was a good amount of stories. They got shorter and shorter as we went on, but uh, that's just due to my memory and like the age of these stories. If I did this again in 10 years, I probably wouldn't remember this printer story very well at all either. So I think we uh, we hit you with another musical inal- mus- musical inalid. Musical inalid. And then uh, we'll get to the outro. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see you soon, folks. Do, 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 do. Musical interlude. 
and it is soon. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Brock, with the podcast About Nothing for Everyone, and this is your outro. This section was supposed to be an outro chat with Ethan, because I planned this as a take your roommate to work day, but uh, that's going to be next week's episode. I'm just going to reuse that title, so you can expect it in your uh, subscription box. I got, I guess, I guess this week's episode is going to have to do something with trouble. Maybe I quote like that Taylor Swift song, trouble, trouble, did I, did I, did I, that's two different songs. That was a uh, stutter. And what is that Taylor Swift trouble song? I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. I was also thinking about the, uh, the game, getting into trouble. It's fun getting into trouble. I think that's going to be my thumbnail for the YouTube video though. That, uh, put that in the background. It's fun getting into trouble. Maybe that's, that's the name of the title. It's fun getting into trouble. Even though these are like very tame, like trouble, my trouble stories, they were so tame, like nothing ever actually happened. I never got in any significant trouble, uh, which I don't think I ever have actually, like thinking about it. I've never, yeah, nothing, um, nothing that's like really affected my life. I've made like a dot of like dumb mistakes while drinking and like done things like regretful things, but never like gotten in trouble. Like I've never, never drinky drove, um, you know, never, never gotten fights, uh, just watch fights. I guess except for pummeling Muhammad multiple times, but he was fine. He walked it off. Uh, yeah, I was not. I'm not a. Tr- I'm not a troublesome boy. I'm a very. I'm a rule follower. I'm a. I'm a good boy. So I don't know what this outro is going to be. I don't know what. Uh, I pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover in the intro chat uh, about the changes to the channel. So I'm getting caught up looking at my artwork in the background. I think it look really cool. If you guys can see it on the video, I'm gonna post a picture to, to my personal Instagram, not the not the business Instagram, but uh of the, the progress we've made. I can't wait to finish off this wall and then start moving to that other wall beside me there. So that, cause that's the wall that I wake up seeing. So I got to think of some good things to put up there. Um, as I said, I'm going to start painting some characters from, uh, from like, uh, shows and movies and what, whatever and such books, you know, whatever, whatever. So if you guys have any ideas of just characters, I don't, don't give me any situations. Uh, just give me characters you'd like to see that you think would be fun uh, to paint. If you have any ideas or suggestions, you know, Sauce them in the comments of the YouTube section. Sauce them in the comments of the Protein Paints. Sauce them to me uh, on the Facebook page. Sauce me on Instagram. Sauce them. You can sauce me up anywhere. Sauce up everything you want, you know? I'm just, I'm ready for your sauce. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to give you guys for the outro. I wish I, I, wish I had more for you. Um, but that this felt like a pretty good episode. And I think uh, I like that format of breaking it up. Even though I did, I didn't break it up. I record, I still recorded it straight through the entire time. But uh, having these uh, separate segments, intro, uh, topic, outro, uh, I think that's uh, good. And I think that'll uh, entice you guys more for the the listenability. I hope is uh you know keep things moving a little better and not just me jumping all around all the time. Help me like get my thoughts more concise. That's a uh... actually there, there was one more thing I wanted to touch on. Uh, because I've been reading this Jordan Peterson book and this just came across me last night that I thought it was a. Uh, it's a good piece of advice. Um, it was the chapter of the book. So this is uh, 12 More Rules for Life. Uh, so his first book was 12 Rules for Life. Uh, this is 12 More Rules for Life. Uh, and I'm only on the second rule. And that's... Uh, ooh, I wish I had a, a Jamie here right now. It's uh, The book's right behind me. But uh, it was like, um, imagine who you could potentially be and set yourself up to be that person. Something like that lines. You know, imagine like your potential and who you want to be and then you start acting in a way to get to that place. And uh, there was a lot of things about, um, you know, when you, if I can try and relate to my situation, like making a lot of these videos and doing this podcast, I think a lot of, you know, the way I'm measuring my progress and stuff, stuff like that is just, uh, you know, how many views it's getting, like the response to it, the likes and stuff, which has all been pretty like stagnant. Um, and like, there is a quality increase that I'm seeing in my editing ability and that's cool. But I think, uh, something I'm never, I'm not really being aware of that I should be more aware of, uh, is also like how the stuff I'm making is changing me as a person, like how much it's changed my personality and who I am. Uh, I think it's easy to get very caught up in like, oh man, my views aren't getting great views. Like I got, I got to change something, do something different, you know? Um, but I got to start considering more like the person who I was when I moved into this house in September, I think is very different than the person I am right now. Like I've learned a lot and I feel like I've grown a lot. I've gotten so much better at managing my habits and like, you know, keeping on track of things and like keeping on task. I still have days. Even yesterday was a day where I was like, I was dragging my feet. 
I told Ethan that like I'm I'm having a slow go today. It's hard it's hard to get things moving and going. And I still like I still got a perfect accountability board. I kind of after yoga I kind of like picked the gears up and like got things going, and like got all my things done. Um and like I would not have been able to do that. Uh, come September, I spent so much time back then and like pre all this YouTube stuff and this podcast. I spent so much time, um, just uh like not utilizing my time and just feeling bad for myself and just, you know, scrolling endlessly on my phone and feelings, you know, so, uh, so useless. Um, so I think it's, uh, I got to start remembering to like, not just look at the, the content I'm putting out as a measure of uh, progress, but also looking at like myself and like reflecting on how I feel and like how my mindset's changed. Um, you know, how, uh, how, uh, like uh, approaching new things better and how all all this kind of stuff like how how am I changing as a person because like all this you know people are, like always looking for oh I need a job with to make more money that's like the kind of progress I need I need a job to make more money or I need to get more friends or I, I need to get more viewers uh, but those things are all like they're not permanent however me as a person I am always constantly with myself and this is a like a permanent entity so this improvement improvements to myself i'm always going to be able to take with me whereas you know making more money at a job i'm not always going to be making there's no guarantee i'm always going to be making that kind of money there's no guarantee my videos are always going to be like increasing in views and stuff like that so i gotta you know taking time to reflect that and always focusing the end focus should be on becoming the best person i can be and not so much just like having a, a, a really cool podcast but that people like uh so and i think I think they kind of go hand in hand. You know, it's kind of like uh, if you work out uh, just to like be healthy and feel healthier, you will get also the bonus of probably looking like better in your mind and like, you know, being more muscular and slimmer. Not that that's like the only way to look better. Um, and it's the same thing. Like uh, if I just focus on like being my best self and how can I best like support myself and like, you know, push myself to do better things that will like reward myself with like better content um, rather than focusing on the content solely itself. And then being like, this is the end goal. I think uh, having a really like a uh, confident and like comfortable Aaron and like always striving to like improve little things in my own life and like how I can always like be a better person. I think that should be uh, a main focus uh, going forward. So maybe you guys can, uh, you know, think of that too. If you're feeling like uh, your life has uh, stagnated or plateaued at all, you know, whatever, the last week, the last year, the last month, whatever it is, try and reflect on, you know, how you have changed as a person rather than just how your surroundings have changed. Uh, and I think yeah, that's a good way to like, you know, inspire some confidence. Like, you know what you have, while it doesn't feel like uh, your life situation has changed very much, who you are uh, might have changed like massively. Uh, so I think that's something uh, important to focus on. And uh, that's uh, that's something I'm going to be looking at definitely uh, in the future going forward. So uh, on that note, I think I'm, I'm going to finish this chapter and then maybe next week I can come back uh, when Ethan and I, next week Ethan and I will kind of talk about our, our 30 day of yoga journey, you know, how we feel coming into, uh, like how we felt coming into January versus uh, the end of January. We both kind of had uh, degenerate Decembers. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, both our journeys maybe paralleled each other and also like different experiences we had. Um, so you can look forward to that. Yeah, next week we're gonna have two people on this podcast. There's gonna be a second voice in your ears. I uh, hope you guys like it because I think going forward it'd be a lot easier for me to just have someone to bounce off of every now and then. Uh, it's still gonna be air and air out. I am I'm still the host. Uh, Ethan's just gonna try and help. Uh, you know, give a an alternate perspective. Uh, and you know, keep me talking about more things and inspire me to talk about more things. So, hope you guys like that. Uh, and hopefully this thing can uh, keep expanding as well as I keep expanding. So. Uh, Take it easy. Eat, take it. I was doing so well, and then I just butchered that. Uh, take it easy, folks, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed your stay. Now take what you learned and have a great day. Damn, it feels good to air out.